What does it mean to be resilient? There's been a lot of talk about resilience over the last few years with all the craziness in the world, but what really does it mean? I'm going to take the jargon out of it and explain what it means to you. And I'm also going to disprove one of the biggest myths out there. A lot of people say that your resilience is what it is. You're either a resilient person or you're not. You can't grow it. Wrong. I'm going to show you exactly how you can change your own resilience, build it, and why it works. So what does it mean to be resilient? Well, the definition that I kind of like, the simplest one, is your capacity to recover from difficult events in life. Uh, and basically what that means is when caca happens, when stuff happens to you, how effectively do you respond and and move forward? We, we all have stuff happen to us. We all have stuff hit us in different ways. But it's how long does it take for us to respond. Think about when you're uh, at work sometime. You know, different changes uh, impact people differently, and the same change can impact different people in different ways. So, for example, think about a time, uh, you know, you may, you may realize where a change came for everyone in the organization. And some people, they went, oh, okay, whatever. And the person next to them was like having a conniption fit, just about blowing up about what was going on. Same change. And what happened is the first person probably had a little more ability to deal with it. The person that reacted strongly, they may have had all sorts of things happen before that wore them down, that wore down their resilience, but they weren't as able to deal with it so it's that ability to deal with the stuff that happens yeah we all go off at times when things happen but how quickly do we respond and move forward because even the guy who got upset has to move forward with it it just takes them longer because they they had to uh, adapt to what was going on so when stuff happens when kaka happens how effective are you at being to able to okay this is happening. How do we move forward to get through the reaction part of it? And think about things that happen, big changes in your life. If if the same change happened again, you probably responded more effectively because you'd already been through it. So your resilience, guess what? It went up. And one of the things that I really want to emphasize here is that your resilience can change. You can shift. Uh, it's not just static that it stays the same way. And to show you this, what I'd like to do is go through some of the things that uh, make up resilience and show you how you can actually change what's happening with that. Okay. So the first thing that I found that has huge impact on resilience is what I call personal power. And that's your sense that your perception that you can control what's happening in your life and around you. The greater your personal power, the more your perceived sense of control over what's happening in your life around you, the greater your resilience. The lower your personal power, the more you feel out of control, the stuff's happening to you and you don't have any say in it, the lower your resist resilience and usually the higher your stress. And think about the last few years with the pandemic and all of these things that have happened. We have felt pretty out of control. Things that seem to be the norm, that seem to be acceptable, that seem to be the way that it worked, all of a sudden, everything got pulled out from under us. For organizations, it was interesting because if you had asked most organizations before the pandemic, if they would allow their workers to go home and work and they go, oh no, you can't trust them to do that. Guess what? 
we got forced into it and a lot of organizations are finding that people are even more productive they they were forced into changes that they weren't ready to make before um so the what that gave that ability to do that once we came through that it caused some stress once we came through that we realized we had more power more ability to adapt to what's going on uh and and to deal with the changes yes it was a stress at first dealing with kids and all this stuff at home but then people actually found they could get more productive and people a lot of people are actually liking it more once they got through that that was their their getting through that ability there now the the next thing is that builds resilience is uh physical activity exercise the more you invest in that, the healthier you are, the higher your resilience, stretching, cardio, all of these elements help to build your resilience. And again, who controls that? You do. Nobody else determines how fit you are. In the end, it's you. Uh, maybe you can't afford uh, certain memberships. We can still go out for walks. We can still run, do all these sort of things uh to to be able to stay in shape and again we have to overcome things one of the things in the pandemic when we were so isolated for a lot of people we just sort of cocooned and and brought down our activity uh we really have to work to sometimes to do it but it is in your control okay get support if you need it coaches buddies all this sort of stuff but you've got the final say of how fit you are Next, in terms of what builds resilience, is self-awareness. The more you start to become aware of your own reactions, your strengths, your challenges, and start working on that, the, the higher your resilience. And the fact that you are watching this video shows that you have probably higher self-awareness than most people because you're investing time to learn about this and to start to look at okay what's happening with me how effective am i at this how am what am i doing well what am i not doing as well that i can work on uh, so that is part of what grows resilience, to be able to start to look and reflect and see what's working and what's not working in you, that, that whole issue of self-awareness. Another piece uh, that builds resilience is emotional regulation. We all hit times when we get upset, but how effectively do we deal with it? How long do we stay in the anger or the frustration or, or all of the, those reactions versus going, okay, what's going on here? Where is this coming from? How this builds from the self-awareness. This is work that you can do. Um, there's certainly work you can do on your own. You can um, get resources and books. You can get professional help with counseling and support to be able to do that. These are all ways that you can build your resilience. This contributes to it. Another critical piece that builds your resilience is self-care. What do you do to invest in you? Because you're probably running around for everybody, trying to help friends, family, people at work, all of these people, people in your community. When do you have time for you? And this is absolutely critical so that you don't become a martyr to be able to invest time in you so that you can have more to give, to share to others. So that self-care, again, it's in your control. And it doesn't have to be a lot. It could be taking a, a, a break at work when you're supposed to have a break and not just trying to plug through and taking a walk for yourself to get some fresh air just small things uh, little treats little things that that nourish you grow your resilience as you move forward 
another piece that links to resilience that really heightens resilience is social support and connection with others and even introverts introverts like to say that oh no it's i i like to just be in with me yeah we, we i'm an introvert but i have my friends that i connect with even during the pandemic i was doing the video calls to connect with people do you have who's your person that you can go to to talk with to just having that connection you know extroverts may have a broader circle introverts need that too and again, you got to be careful because the pandemic isolated us and a lot of us, particularly introverts, pulled into themselves, disconnected from others, which hampers your resilience. It brings it down. So how can you make the connections that nourish you? How can you find people who are involved in activities that you enjoy, that, 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 that fill your heart? So those are all things that, that build your resilience and you've got again control on this now another uh uh thing that builds resilience is problem solving uh and being able to find your way through things whether it's the new challenges at work or personal problems that you're working on on your own or with friends or with professional support how can you find your way through these are skills you can learn Every single one of these are skills that you can learn and develop to nourish and grow your resilience so that you can be more effective going forward with everything that you do. So start to look at this list. Don't try to do everything because if you do that, I, I can guarantee you, you're going to fail. You're not going to get anything done. Pick one thing that you can do and start to work on that. And then another, and then another, and slowly build from that until you can then go on to the next and take time for that. And bit by bit, you build your capacity to be able to recover and move forward from challenging events. How often are you up all night because your head's going nonstop talking about things that make no sense or beating yourself up about things that you can't change anyway? How often do you second guess yourself? Again, beating yourself up because of stuff you did or didn't do or worrying about what's to come with this endless, endless head chatter. Some people even think that head chatter is who they are. It's not who you are. I've got some news for you. You can take control of that. What would you say if I told you I could show you how to turn that off just like that anytime you wanted so that you can step into presence, into mindfulness, and be able to have a decent, nice sleep without constantly having this going all the time? That's exactly what I can show you in a free course I've created. Just go to silenceselftalk.com, sign up, and it's my gift to you. This, to me, is the biggest barrier to uh, resilience. It's what wears down the resilience. If you can shut that off, if you can quiet it down, you ramp up your resilience and you deepen your ability to be fully present in the things that you really want to experience in your life. Go to the site, sign up now, enjoy. Remember, if you want to see more of these videos that show you how to thrive in this crazy complex world that we're in, make sure that you subscribe, hit the bell so that you will be notified when the videos are up and please, like and share so that we can pass this on to everybody who can use this information.